Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. That's me, you see, sitting in the pilot's cage of my wing on the lake bed at El Mirage, California. Uh, this is a long-awaited video, especially in my mind, of successful flight tests of the wing. Uh, apparently I've uh, succeeded in solving the flow problems over the wing and the control system is working well and we had uh, two very good flight tests and a taxi test and that's what these videos are about. Uh, you're going to see three segments here today. Uh, this first segment is a taxi test. Uh, we decided to repeat the taxi test because there have been significant changes to the landing gear and other components so it's always a good idea to go back and repeat. Uh, so we're going to uh, tow it up to 20 miles an hour and I'm going to check the steering and see if I can lift the nose a little uh, see how that goes and uh, just make sure that I have uh, good positive uh, roll control on the glider and uh, I won't find out about the pitch control until I have it off the ground so at this point let's take a look at that taxi test So here we are in the middle of the run. In a moment here, you'll see the elevator come up. There it is. I'm trying to lift the nose off the ground, but don't have quite enough speed to do that. So put the elevators back down and just continue the roll and uh, call for him to stop. We rolled a stop. Uh, everything's nice. The wings were very easy to control and roll throughout the uh, run and uh, very easy to steer. It's about the smoothest taxi test we've had out of all of them. Are we going to go from here or are we going to go push back? We're going to ask, we're going to talk to you for a minute and decide. Okay. So when Slack went in the line and it came back on the ground, it popped the release. So the main thing that I learned on that run was that uh, the control stick is a little too long and uh, gave me a little too much authority and I was getting very light feedback on the stick. So in the middle of that run I had shifted my hand from the top of the control stick to the bottom and for the remainder of the uh, test runs we made I kept my hand as low on the stick as I could. So we'll be uh, shortening up that stick in the shop. Um, and uh, let's see, what else did I learn? Yeah, that was pretty much most of it other than uh, it was handling well and I felt that we were ready to go forward to the first real flight test. And then we're going to have a short discussion here about how fast to go. We talked about going uh, 30, which we had done in the past, and we made the decision to go 35 just to give some margin above stall speed. And that happened to be a, a fortuitous decision uh, because the glider tended to lift off and land at 28 miles an hour, so it gave us uh, sufficient margin for maneuvering. And on this flight, if you watch the left screen, you'll get a good view of the pitchiness up and down. I experienced some significant PIO. Uh, the glider was extremely sensitive to uh, elevon deflections. Uh, so 
we, for the day, we uh, decrease the elevon throws, and going forward, I'll be uh, reducing the span of the elevons a little bit uh, at the root end. That'll make uh, give me good aileron control and not quite so much elevator command. Uh, I'm hoping that by uh, shortening the span at the root end, it'll have a bigger impact on the elevator than the aileron. But watch this pitchiness. It was pretty spooky at the time. And from my view, looking straight forward, and I see sky ground, sky ground, sky ground. Uh, it was pretty exciting. Uh, but fast hands, and uh, we kept her flying. So let's get ready for that flight here. So the plan here is what we talked about last night, right? We go 35. I try to lift it off the ground. Fly straight at level. I know I don't have to hold the stick any higher than like this. That is plenty. The ailerons are very nicely sensitive by the way they're flying. Take it off. Up you got. So you got this kind of A like a little drop tower D. How far did we roll it, Dan? It looks like a thousand feet. A thousand feet, like that. Yeah. That's about all I really can tell you. So it looks like you had good yards. control from my perspective. Oh, I was very precise. I, I, I did play with the ailerons a little bit. Yeah. Get a little bit of the bank, yeah, and that was all falling. And that's when I decided I thought I'd see if the nose wheel was light. Yeah. You know, I was I knew it wouldn't lift off because the nose it, it didn't even it starts bouncing differently on the light bed when it's light. Yeah. Ready? So we're going to see a quick acceleration here up to 35 miles an hour and right after I take off you'll start to see the pitchiness start. Um, the glider, I didn't command the takeoff, the glider took off on its own at 28 miles an hour because now we had the incidents set on the ground. We need to reduce that a little. And I'm up and there we go. And you see the elevon going up and down as I'm trying to catch up with the pitch and I quickly pull the release. Once I was off toe and slowed up a little bit, I was getting the uh, oscillations damped out slightly. But uh, uh, for a short period of time, that was uh, pretty uh, surprising and uh, challenging. I wouldn't say that it spooked me, but uh, uh, made me very cautious going forward. So here we are getting, uh, it's maybe an hour and a half later, we're getting set up for another uh, run and uh, it's uh, late in the day so it's perfect it's calm we kind of waited for the thermalies to disappear and we reduced the uh, elevon throw by about 25 percent uh, and i was a bit concerned that i would not have enough aileron control that we'd fix the elevator problem and then not have enough aileron but turned out still had enough yeah. aileron I so i think really this is a case of uh, the elevon is just too big in span and it's having a, a strong drive on uh, the elevator function uh, and removing a little bit of uh, the elevon at the root end will considerably damp down the elevator function without having too severe of an impact on the aileron function because there's not that much moment arm for aileron function at the root end of the elevon. So here we go, another fast acceleration. I had to weave around a couple of potholes uh, on the way out and once again the glider will take off on its own right about 28 miles an hour and we're up and you see that this flight is much more smooth there's a little bit of pitchiness not too bad and then when I release there's some pitchiness because the trims change uh, when I'm not being pulled by the nose but still a nice smooth glide and uh, I flared a little too soon or inappropriately and uh, the landing was uh, firm. Uh, I didn't slam it into the ground, but it was a firm landing. And I think it's just a matter of getting to know the aircraft and when to flare it. It's got quite a flat glide on it, of course, as expected. So I'd flare it a little too soon. I could have waited longer and then just eased into the flare. And we use that fancy brake there, my left hand, and a very successful flight. So here we are set up for, uh, well, here we are from the other view. There was a camera mounted uh, under the wing on the right hand side and you may have already seen it. Okay, just use the speedometer. Yeah, I know. Okay, go 35. Alright, 35, here we go. Have a good one. Thank you. And we're off.
You'll notice here as I reach takeoff speed that the uh, right main wheel actually lifts first and then the left main and then finally the nose wheel which really indicates that the incidence on the wing was set too high on the ground. The wing actually wanted to trim at a lower angle of attack. But here you see I was able to climb it up to about 10 feet or so, maybe, maybe a little more than that, and hold her nice and steady at that altitude. Hit the release, do a nice little glide, a little bit of pitchiness, and uh, there we go, touchdown. Do I get two landings out of that one? I don't know. I don't know. And yeah, we roll to a nice stop. So really a perfect flight. Considering it's only number two, uh, I've been in the air lots of times, but I don't really count them as flights because uh, a lot of them did not have uh, regular smooth landings to them. And I wasn't really the pilot. I was more of a spectator on those old flights. So these are the first two real flights and thrilled with it. Uh, it's going to be very interesting going forward. Got some modifications to make. Uh, I'm about ready to put in an order for the uh, parachute system and uh, begin making modifications. It'll probably be about... Uh, three months before the glider is ready to go out again. Uh, the lake might be wet by then and we'd have to wait till spring uh, unless we find some other place to go fly it. At this point I feel comfortable enough that if we just took it to an uncontrolled airport that I can steer and fly straight enough that we could stay over the runway. Uh, so that could be a workable solution also. Um, so I once again, to all my patrons out there, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, your unwavering support really has made this project possible, and it's been a long, long road. Solved some really difficult aerodynamic problems, and uh, I think we have a lot of fantastic flights to look forward to. And I hope you stick around to see those. Uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic time. Uh, so, as I always say, fly safe and bye for now. I can go home with my candy bag full. <laughs>